In this topic, you will learn how to set up suppliers in preparation for the purchasing process. Now, suppliers are business partners defined with a supplier role. You must define the supplier information in order to enter purchase requests, purchase orders, and invoices. You also define the order address, the invoice address, and also the shipment address for the supplier. The order address is where the order is sent. It is defined as the default address for the supplier. The invoice address defaults from the supplier record. However, you can determine that the invoice supplier is different from the one which you are ordering. Additionally, you determine which documents to print, whether you can enter multi-line purchase orders, and identify any additional discounts or charges added to the invoices entered. You also define financial attributes, including the currency, tax rule, accounting code for financial transactions, and payment terms. You define the type of supplier, which can be either a standard or miscellaneous supplier. And finally, there are global controls that include minimum order amount entered for a supplier, which determines if an order can be placed. Also, if the order amount is less than the minimum, the message displays and you cannot proceed with the order creation process. And a supplier must also have a dispute status of either no or warning. If hold is selected, you cannot create documents, including orders, for the supplier. Let's take a look at how the supplier is defined for the purchasing process. Now, suppliers are defined under common data in the BP's block and the supplier function. Let's take a look at the current supplier that's showing and how it's defined. First, you define the category. The category provides multiple different defaults allowing for simpler entry and also grouping for reporting purposes. Then you enter the code and then the identity tab where you enter all the details. The country, the language, the currency are defaulted from parameters. Enter site allows you to be able to transfer one product from one location to another very simply. Under roles, you can see the supplier checkbox is checked. Service supplier, also the service caller. The supplier can be one or both of those. One allowing you to supply services, the other allow you to call regarding services. Then there's the address, as mentioned, for billing purposes and also for payment purposes. As you can see, you can enter multiple different addresses. To enter address, you put a code in first, and let's go ahead and add a second address and a description. The country gives you the format. The format changes according to the country. And then you enter the other address information, when you enter a postal code, they're in a table. If they're updated, you can enter the postal code, and that makes the city default and the state default. The icon here takes you to Google Maps, and it will give you the location of the address. You can enter multiple telephone numbers, multiple email addresses as well. Now, the first address that you enter becomes the default address, though you can change it. If I click on the corporate, you can see that is the default address. Let's go to the commercial tab. Now, regarding purchasing, you have the order section, which allows you to do free freight threshold, minimum order, dollar amount, multi-line orders, order acknowledgement, reminder, also delivery reminder. You can also enter a price structure for pricing purposes. There are in the receipt area, there's unavailable days. There's also a default carrier, shipping modes as well. You can base a due date off of invoice date or receipt date as you can see here. Invoicing elements that allow you additional discounts or charges. The different reports that you would like to print. A template for you to have a specially designed report. You can also add text to the order and also the return. Now let's go to the management tab. Now the management tab allows you to, to select the type of supplier in a miscellaneous area, a normal supplier, a prospect, or a miscellaneous. Now a prospect can be used to raise a quote only. And when recording the purchase order, the address is entered on the fly. You have credit control details. You can enter the customer number. Also rate type for multi-currency. The matching tolerance basically is where you want to match what's ordered to what's been delivered, also what's been invoiced by dollar or percentage amount or by quantity as well. You can put a payment on hold plus also dispute. You can also enter supplier notes. They're internal notes that you can enter. 
Let's select the, the notes, which allows you to enter in a code here and enter a note. Let's enter a code. Let's just say it's a supplier code or a support code. A description. And the category determines where do I want this information to show up or be available for me. Let's go ahead and drill down to show you. As you can see, for suppliers, the category, where do I want this note to be available? You can select the validity date, expiration date. Auto display means a pop-up note. So if I use a supplier within a transaction, the note will pop up and also make it a priority. And we can say uh, verify and make it a pop-up note. That means if it, the supplier is used, it produces a pop-up note. Also, you can have statistical groups which are used for inquiries and reporting purposes. On the ranking tab, this basically allows you to have coefficients in order to evaluate supplier performance regarding respect to uh, commercial conditions, lead time, price, quantity, quality, also a free form field to enter information in. Example would be on quantity. If I put an order out, am I receiving the full order or is it just a partial order? He basically decides on which supplier has the best quantity deliver. Financials tab. This determines the billing information. Invoicing, pay to address, also the accounting code for financial transactions as well, also the terms that you can see here. Bank ID for electronic banking, and then we have our contacts. Now the contacts actually come from a table as well. You do have to enter a code for a contact. If I enter a code here, and the code is in the system, the information pops up. As soon as I enter a code and the details of a contact, it updates the table with the new contact. As you can see here, I can go and also select from that contact table. Well, same contact could be available for many suppliers. And then when you're done, you save. And finally, we have the products tab in the right panel. Now, the products tab allows you to see products you purchase from the supplier. Now, the products record is where you link the supplier to the product. Now, when creating a purchase order, it will show the supplier's ID instead of your product ID. You can see the products here that this supplier supplies. And now you know how to define the supplier information that impacts the purchasing process.